Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if you're a regular this channel, you probably know that I am a fan of Raylib. Now Raylib is a library in the neighborhood of like SFML, SDL, Allegro, those kind of um, lower level tools that provide most of the functionality you need to do game programming. It is available on a wide variety of platforms, uh, as you can see here, Windows, Linux, Apple, Raspberry Pi, Android, HTML5, and it's available in so many different languages. It also provides you an absolute ton of modular libraries and a number of different tools. So basically, if you're looking to get started and you want to use C or C++ for your programming language, this is about one of the best pathways that's out there. All you need to know really is this cheat sheet. This is all of the functionality in Raylib. It's all super straightforward, which is wonderful. On top of that, there are a ton of examples that you can walk through to get up and going, full source code to each one of these, and they tend to be a single file of source code. And when you're just starting out with Raylib, that's where it really shines, because all you do is you download the installer, and then you head on in here once it's installed, go to your Raylib folder, you will find a folder in there called NPP, and then you run Notepad++. So it's Raylib ships with the C++ compiler pre-configured for, you. Uh, and then on top of that, it has this uh, code editor built in here. And what we can do is run a variety of different examples. So see, this opens up a basic window example. If you want to go ahead and test this out, just hit the F6 key. It will go ahead and run your project. And boom, Bob's your uncle. There is your project running. You want to start writing some code? Literally just replace the code in here and you're good to go. It's really simple to get started. Cool thing is you can just open up another example. So come in here, Raylib, ton of different examples. So here, is a camera example, for example. And then once again, just load that new file in, go ahead and run it, and then boom, there is your example running. The reason why I'm talking about today for Raylib, though, is there is a new tool that was just added to the Raylib ecosystem, and it is quite cool. So let's head on back over here to the Raylib folder, and we now have this guy right here. So this is the Raylib project creator. Now, this was just added, literally just released. So one hour ago, this was pushed up. And what this allows you to do is take that next step. So it's nice working in Notepad++ and having a tooling chain configured for you. But what if you want to use Visual Studio? Studio Code, or you want to use uh, Visual Studio, the full version, the 2022, say, community version, which is available for free. And then say you want to share your project out on GitHub for other people to work with. Well, this is an intermediate tool that allows you to migrate from a single couple of source code files to full-blown project files. Uh, there are some problems with it, as I will point out as we go. Uh, but basically, yeah, it's the project creator, new tool to help you set up professional Raylib projects. Starting with Raylib is coming to create a simple.c file in some directory and jump directly into coding. The Raylib Windows installer package already provides a pre-configured environment to do so. The compiler, NPP, editor, Raylib libraries are all pre-configured. That's what we saw earlier on. Literally just open up the .c file, pref F6 to run it. But as soon as the project starts growing, usually more complex project structures are required. Usually a build system for multiple code files, external libraries, project assets, resources, configuration files, executable icons, even some automated CI, CD uh, system, uh, continuous improvement, continuous development. Uh, configuring all those aspects usually requires a lot of time. The Raylib Project Creator is a visual tool to simplify that process and automatically create and pre-configure some common build system for a project, providing uh, an input source code to start with. So let's go take a look at the tool. So it is right here. Uh, now, my immediate feedback on the tool is, first off, it is not DPI aware. So you try and run this on a 4K monitor, especially with this font, it is borderline useless. I had to go down to uh, 1080p to get it uh, into a legible form, so hopefully they they can scale it up in the future. So what you got here basically, here is a simple sample already set up and ready to go. Uh, another example set up and ready to go, but we're gonna do it with a custom file. So you can basically name your project. So my Ray project. Uh, Rayomatic. Uh, give it a description if you want, uh, give it your developer name, your website, and so on. And then really all you're doing, you point it towards where you installed Raylib. So I installed it off C root, which is the default of the installer. Stick with that and you are good to go. Also where the compiler path is. Now another area that's a little bit different right now, so there are all these toggles here, but they don't actually do anything. So if you wanted to just build it for Visual Studio or Visual Studio, 22, Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio 2022, you can't right now. But what you do is basically come on in here and pick your source code that you wish to go with. Now, the next bug I'm going to point out is for some reason, this filter is not working. So you go to a directory that has stuff in it, 
Um, so let's go back here to say uh, core, and then down here, all files, you're gonna notice they're not there. Uh, so that is downside. Uh, for some reason, uh, the filtering isn't working right. Should be an easy fix, but one of those things to be aware of, the filter by C and .h files is not working. But then all you do is basically add in the code of your project, the, all the files that are dependent. Another problem I've found so far, uh, you can't delete things once added, so you basically have to restart if you've added a source file that you don't necessarily want. Another one of the, the growing pains for this project, but hopefully that gets fixed easy enough as well. And then when you're ready to go, basically just come on in here and generate the project files. I guess I should give it a directory, an output directory. So come down here. Of course, this being my channel, this is going to go into temp. Uh, and we'll call this Ray Demo YouTube, like so, and create it there. All right, so go ahead and then just basically go ahead and generate the project structure. So there we go. Our project is now generated. What we are going to do is come on down here. Uh, so let's go and find it. So here, C temp, uh, Ray demo YouTube. So here you see my Ray project as I named it. And then you go inside of it and what you're going to find is your source code has been copied over here. Uh, one thing that is a challenge is it needs to, um, if you need to bring in data files to go with it, it needs to be made clear where those data files go. It'd be nice if the tool also gave you the ability to grab your data and bring it over as well. Uh, but then you come in here and then you've got your projects. So you've got a couple of different options here. You've got a Visual Studio 2022 project. You have a Visual Studio Code Workplace and it's already pre-configured so that it has the, the paths to the build tools and so on. Or you have a script. So if you want to build your project, you can build it with just bat. You saw it build, it wasn't really that exciting. Or what you do is say, come in here, here's the Visual Studio project for it. We'll go ahead and open that guy up. And then what you'll notice is it brings in the project already been configured. So you see here the Raylib uh, libraries are configured and then your project is there as well. So we're gonna go ahead and set that as the startup project. Control Shift B to build our project. And there you see it is configured. So now you're working with full-blown Visual Studio. So if you wanna, you know, again, upload this up to GitHub for other people to work with, or you wanna start making it more complex, you're starting bringing in other libraries, etc. You have now migrated from working with Notepad++ to a more complete tool chain. So this is a neat tool. And there you can see the results of the running. Again, there are some uh, bugs that need to be fixed out. Uh, for one, it'd be nice to pick which ones you individually want or just remove this because if it's not an option that you can toggle, why is it here? Uh, nice to be able to remove source code files so you don't need to restart the application. And of course, this needs to be uh, scalable and DPI aware. Like I said, on a 4K monitor, this is almost completely illegible, but really it is a cool tool because it takes some of what I really love about Raylib, which is that it's a very accessible entry point for developers that are looking to get into uh, the world of game programming and they want to do it with either C, C++, or again, a plethora of other languages. There's 60 plus language bindings available for Raylib. But once you've moved beyond that, okay, I just started and now how do I migrate over to another build tool? And that's where C++ starts getting really annoying is setting up your linker dependencies, etc. And this tool is giving you that cool migration path. So it gives you, it goes from being absolute beginner to more of like an intermediate project setup. And that is exactly what the Raylib project is all about. So this tool is a perfect fit in that regard. Again, just need to have a couple things cleaned up on it and it will be uh, really cool. So once again, you also need to have, be aware, this is currently glitched. I imagine that's a super simple fix. Uh, there's also a couple of catches right now. Uh, so just be aware of limitations. Current version has some limitations. Script generated is currently Windows only. That's the build.bat. Uh, so you can still, you'll still generate the Visual Studio Code projects and so on like that. Um, and then uh, Visual Studio Code projects require the compiler and tools to be available in the system path. So if your uh, compiler tools aren't in path environment variable, they won't work correctly. So uh, some things to be aware of. And as you saw, there's a couple of other little things that need to be worked out with this tool. But uh, again, a very cool thing for a very cool project. So if you've never checked out uh, Raylib, I highly recommend doing so, especially if you're looking for a more low level framework that provides all of the things you need to make 2D games uh, from code only. Uh, but now you've got this nice migration path. So if, again, you want to start moving from Notepad++ into things like Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code, you now have that path. So let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.